Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing this beautiful holiday card that features some ink blending on colored card stocks. And I have shopped my stash and I've grabbed some products, both old and new, to combine together for this fun holiday card. Now I wanted to just show you that you don't always have to have all holiday products to create a beautiful holiday card. I'm using the elongated lattice, the stitches cover plate, along with some curvy leaves, the joy die. I won't be using the hot foil plate on this today, but just the die. And then I'm going to use the snowflakes hot foil along with that coordinating die and the Thrill of Hope stamp set. So this is quite a variety of different products here, but we're gonna create a beautiful, kind of modern looking holiday card with these products. Now I'll also be using some colored card stocks with some ink colors that kind of coordinate. Now you'll notice that for my red, I've chosen a pink base because I kind of wanted to create a red color. I end up with more of the pink color. <laughs> And then for this green blend, I have chosen kind of a teal colored cardstock along with Tidal Pond and Evergreen inks from Pink Fresh Studio. Now, Tidal Pond is really close to the cardstock that I'm using, but I'm basically using this as a base coat of ink so that my evergreen will kind of blend from the cardstock color into this evergreen color instead of having it that harsh line of evergreen. And, and I would say that when you're doing this, it's a great way to create a panel that looks like you blended the entire thing without working quite as hard. But you are going to have to put a little elbow grease into something like this, especially when you're doing such a large area like I am today. And I need to be able to die cut the elongated lattice cover plate from this teal cardstock. So I'm using a rather large piece of cardstock. Also, I just wanna quickly apologize if you're hearing a little more background noise than normal. I have a brand new fur baby in my house and she does not let me out of her sight yet and I'm kinda glad about that. <laughs> so she's sitting here with me and she may shake her collar and things like that every now and then. Now for this pink cardstock, I have chosen Candy Apple and berry licious and i am just kind of transitioning from that pink color into this deep dark red color now in the end i end up die cutting from the more left part of this cardstock which is the more pinky portion but i wanted to leave this portion in here so that you can see how you can quickly build up these colored blends on large areas by starting with a colored cardstock instead of using a white as your base now to lean this a little more maroon on the bottom, I've brought in gathered twigs here, and this is just gonna create that really beautiful, kind of intense burgundy Christmas red that we all love so much. Now after I saw how that gathered twigs kind of intensified the base of that red, I wanted to do the same for this green color. And so I have brought in licorice ink. It's a really dark gray. You could use a black ink as well. And I have used the Stargazer ink from Pink Fresh Studio in this color combo before, and that works well. Just something really deep, dark, and intense. And that will kind of really bump up the contrast in this blend a little bit where you want it to be darkest. And really the key points in all of this is just to start with a color that will kind of blend with the deepest, darkest color you're going for, but you're gonna want a lighter version of that as in the pink and choose a color that's gonna help you transition from one color to the other. So a lighter red, a Tidal Pond color for this teal color. And you can see these blends are absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some die cutting from these and so I didn't really have to worry about how smooth the blends were and oftentimes they're gonna smooth out as they dry anyways. So don't worry about it too much, especially if you're die cutting them into these smaller pieces like I am. Now to add some texture to this pinky red panel, I've used the stitches cover plate. So I have that really fun kind of sweater weather kind of thing going on. <laughs> 
And then I die cut this teal colored panel or this dark green colored panel using the elongated lattice cover die. Now I am using this Joy die cut here. Now I love that you can use this with the hot foil plate or on its own. It makes sense both ways. And I'm gonna die cut some letters from this stitched background that I created with the ink blending. And originally I thought I would use this more intense red version, but I am a sucker for pink. <laughs> So I moved this die up just a little bit. So it's actually just catching a little bit of that candy apple on the bottom along with the pink cardstock. I die cut it again and that was the winner for me. But I did want you to see the beautiful red blends you can get by starting with a pink colored cardstock. So they're both there as options for you. Now I did want to do just a little bit of foiling on this card. So I am using the Snowflakes Hot Foil Plate along with the Glimmer Champagne Hot Foil. And I'm going to foil these snowflakes on vellum. And I just added an additional cardstock shim to this sandwich as I ran it through my die cut machine to get a really nice clean foiled image on this vellum. Sometimes I need to do that and sometimes I don't. I actually got a tad bit of over foiling on this so I cut up probably done without it. And once I have those foiled, I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut these vellum snowflakes out. Now I'm going to use the smallest of these snowflakes behind the O of my joy word. But before I do that, I wanted to add just a little bit of dimension and a little bit of weight to these letters. And so I have die cut them two more times from some heavyweight cardstock and I'm using some liquid glue to stack them up. So I have two layers of white cardstock and then the layer of ink blended and die cut stitched pattern cardstock there on the top. Now I'm also going to layer up this lattice die and I know that this is not for everyone, but I just think that that little bit of dimension makes for a really cool looking card. And so I have two layers of heavyweight white cardstock. I'm using liquid glue to adhere them together. And then I'm topping that off with my die cut and ink blended panel. And this is so beautiful because it adds some intensity to this entire panel with the darker ink blending towards the bottom. And then it gets lighter as you go towards the top. And I didn't have to work too hard because I started with that colored cardstock. Now I have my little joy word all kind of adhered together with that vellum snowflake in the center. And I'm also using some die cut curvy leaves. I've die cut these from some vellum and I'm adhering them onto my card front. And then I'm going to use some foam adhesive to adhere my joy sentiment right there in the center of my card. And I heat embossed a sub sentiment from that Thrill of Hope stamp set onto a scrap of that ink blended green cardstock and just adhered that below the die cut joy. Now I have the additional vellum snowflakes that I created using that hot foil plate and I'm actually adhering those directly to my top folding A2 size card base with a little bit of liquid glue. These are gonna be concealed behind that lattice area so I'm not worried about my liquid glue showing too much but I kind of kept it to where it was behind the foiled lines. And now I'm adding liquid glue all over the back of this lattice piece and adhering that directly over those vellum snowflakes. And it's so beautiful with them peeking through that lattice die cut. I finished my card off using my new favorite, my new favorite embellishment. <laughs> And that is the champagne glitter drops from Pink Fresh Studio. And that completes my card for today. I wish you could see it in person because there is so much sparkle and shine on this card and the camera just doesn't do it justice. So be sure to shop your stash for some products that you may already own that you can incorporate into your holiday card making. And try this ink blending on colored cardstock. I think you're going to love the results. As always, I'll have links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on this YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the paper crafting and card making video tutorials shared here.
Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.